On this little tour, we're going out to the great Wild West, to Indian Territory. And I think there'll be room for all of you. But to be sure, I'll look over the reservations. Hello, Mr. Medberry. It's Elsie, the dumb dame. She was born without brains, and the mistake has never been rectified. I'd like to go along with you to this Indian country. I've never seen any red caps. Well, be quiet then, while I explain this trip to the folks. Just pick out one of these horses, and we'll be on our way. All right. I want that one over there. You mean that dray horse? <laughs> oh, Mr. Medberry, it sounds so funny to hear you speak baby talk. That isn't a dray horse. It's a brown one. On our way into the Pueblo country, we came across a herd of sheep. My uncle owns a lot of sheep. Is that so? How many heads? They each have one. The grazing here is not very good. In fact, the land is so poor that the sheep grow cotton instead of wool. Here we are in the village. Notice how deserted the streets are, but there's a reason for it. The chief has just bought a new automobile and his wife is learning to drive it today. We called on several of the natives, but nobody was at home. The only person we could find was a disappointed bride, returning from an elopement. My sister was hurt once in an elopement. Your sister was hurt in an elopement? Yeah, she stepped out of the window and was badly injured. How could she be injured stepping out of the window onto a ladder? Well, that's just it. Her sweetheart was a plumber and he'd forgotten to bring the ladder. At the next house, we met Chief Rain in the face and his wife, April Showers. Gosh, <laughs> what funny names. I wonder what my name would be if I were an Indian. They'd probably call you Princess Water on the Brain. Well, well, here's Big Chief Wolf at the door. He is very proud over the fine showing that his wife made in the Olympic Games. She took first prize in the blessed event. And this is their papoose. Their what? Papoose. Don't you know what a papoose is? Certainly. Everybody knows what a papoose is. It's the last call on a freight train. A pretty little Indian maiden comes out to meet us. It looks like Watha. I think I'll speak to her. Hi, Watha. Hi, Medbury. And this is her sweetheart. Notice the fuzz on his upper lip. For months, he's been trying to raise a mustache. And finally, came the down. He's getting it on the installment plan. A little down, and a little more each week. In another corner of the yard, the natives are busy in the sand, making patterns for Navajo rugs. Gee, they must have had to eat a lot of spinach to get all that sand. Elsie, I think you're an ignoramus. Oh, Mr. Medberry, I'll bet you tell that to all the girls. You talk like a perfect idiot. Yeah, isn't it wonderful? And I never took a dramatic lesson in my life. On our way out of the village, we met the local weather prophet, who told us that it would rain before night. Yeah, and they need the rain. An hour's rain now would do more good in five minutes than a month of it would do in a week at any other time. In the next village, we met an entirely different tribe of Indians. Some of these foreigners understood English, and we were forced to speak Pig Latin so that they wouldn't know what we were talking about. Do you ask Keanke Uteig Peatenle? I wonder what tribe this effeminate-looking Indian belongs to. He's probably one of the Iroquois. We happened to look up, and there, standing on top of Signal Mountain, were Chief Running Water and his two sons, clean and dirty. They are calling the natives to arms. You mean there's going to be a battle? Yes. There's only one way that they can save their teepees. So they've declared war on the building and loan. Ah, Running Water is now joined by his two daughters, hot and cold. They're looking around the corner for prosperity, but they can't even find the corner. All the famous warriors are turning out. There's Sitting Bull standing over there. I don't know whether you folks know it or not, but Sitting Bull has a very beautiful daughter. Her name is Sitting Pretty. Do you know who Sitting Bull is, Elsie? Certainly. He was the first man to buy a suit with two pairs of pants. No, you're wrong. Sitting Bull was married to Minnie Haha, the daughter of Laughing Water. And together, they raised a family of little gigolos. A snake dance always precedes a battle, so trouble is not far off. Gee, Mr. Medbury, I'm scared. The Indians might scalp me. Well, let them scalp you. They won't find anything. You're right. I'm afraid of a massacre. 
Gosh, you pronounce words the funniest way. You mean mascara. Don't worry, though, Elsie. I know how to handle these redskins. My grandfather was a famous Indian killer. Many a time he went out by himself and shot 10 or 15 bucks. That was a lot of money in those days. He was an expert with a bow and arrow. Isn't that a coincidence? The woman next door to me is taking lessons on the bow and arrow. Maybe your grandfather would come over and help her. My grandfather is dead. Well, don't bother him then. My, my, just look at those Indians dance. Gosh, I wish they'd stop it. They're driving me out of my mind. They're what? They're driving me out of my mind. That isn't a drive. That's only a putt. Animals can sense trouble quicker than human beings. Look at that buffalo, Elsie. Yeah, that reminds me, Mr. Medbury. You owe me a nickel. The rest of the herd sense trouble, too, and they start stampeding. Would you like to go out with me someday, Elsie, and hunt buffalo on horseback? <laughs> Gee, I'm not that dumb. Anybody knows that buffaloes don't ride horseback. For hours, the Indians kept up their war dance. The leader, Big Chief Run on the Bank, is organizing his warriors for an attack against the building and loan. They have decided on the hour and will strike at exactly 6%. The Redskins are very restless and are counting the minutes. One moment, please, while we broadcast the signal. When you hear the gong, it will be exactly... 5.45, sitting bull of a time. The men began shooting and fired volley after volley. Another shot rang out, and another redskin bit the dust. There's another shot, and another redskin bit the dust. Two more shots, and two more redskins bit the dust. Gee, they're biting pretty good today, aren't they? Being unable to seize the fort, the Indians try to capture the town. One of the warriors is very polite. Before he scalps a man, he always asks, Shall I take a little off the top, sir? Oh. 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 What's that man moaning about, Mr. Medbury? He's a Scotchman and is broken-hearted. He just spent 50 cents for a haircut before this massacre. Look, some woman is hurt, and the finance company is carrying her. That's nothing. The finance companies are carrying everybody nowadays. Come on, Elsie. Let's get out of here. Elsie. Elsie, where are you? Wait a minute, folks. Elsie has been captured by a young Indian chief. I must go to her rescue. Be brave, Elsie. Be brave. I'll save you. Careful, Pelface. Red men got you covered. Why don't you let her go and take one of your own tribe? Indian like girl. The Indian no give her up. Me take her home. Make her my squaw. The girl has something to say about it. Speak, Elsie. Won't you speak to me? Sure. Why don't you leave this Indian alone, Mr. Medbury? He's running this massacre. And so, on his pony, the Indian takes Elsie back to his wigwam, where forever after she will listen to her massacre's voice.